Wow, OpenAI is changing the game yet again. So today they had their first ever Developer Day conference, during which they announced a ton of new stuff. And just to start it off, they announced the ChatGPT4 Turbo model. And apparently this model is like the most powerful model that they've ever trained. It has a new date cut off that is in April 2023. So it's no longer delayed by two years like it was. And it has a crazy new context window of 128,000 tokens. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. That is like a book of 300 pages. I mean, that's crazy. You know, just six months ago, we were dealing with context limits that were like 4,000 characters and you had to really figure out how do I jam this information into my request so that I can actually get a meaningful response. And apparently that's just all out the window now because we can just submit up to 128,000 characters into this thing, get a ton of results. And of course, somehow, while releasing this crazy functionality, they make it cheaper. So this thing is three times cheaper than GPT-4. So the new pricing is one cent per thousand prompt tokens and three cents per thousand completion tokens. For most customers, that will lead to a blended rate more than 2.75 times cheaper to use for GPT-4 Turbo than GPT-4. I don't even I don't even understand how they can afford to do that. But as a user, I mean, this is just incredible. And all of this is going to be available through the chat GPT interface. So when you go to chat GPT, um, dot com and you're talking to it, uh, it's going to use this new model. And, and it's like the most powerful model that they've ever made. So it's just crazy. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That is just the start of this event. I mean, it, 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 it's crazy. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, not only does it get all of these benefits, it's also multimodal now. Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. So you can talk to this thing, you can submit images to this thing, it'll understand all of those details, it can talk back to you. I mean, it, you know, it'll call doll E3 to generate images when it needs to, it will run code when it needs to. <laughs> the rate at which these things are advancing is just crazy to me. And this announcement was just over the top. I mean, and, and again, this is just the beginning. So let's dive into some of the other stuff that they discussed, uh, because I, I think there's one thing in there that's even bigger than the GPT-4 Turbo model. So let's dive in. Other couple of notable features with the GPT-4 Turbo model is the fact that it now has a JSON mode. So you no longer have to figure out how to prompt it to return in JSON and specify very carefully the format. It will actually just return JSON on its own if you turn that mode on, which I think is super useful. I mean, I've been using the JSON approach to interact with other functions that I want to call or, or pass it to a UI that then I can render something. Uh, so this JSON mode is going to be pretty huge and a really big convenience factor. Uh, also, the, the GPT-4 Turbo model is going to have multi-function calling. So when it figures out that you want to do something like call a specific function, it will go ahead and actually call that. So they're really making this function calling like a native feature that ChatGPT can use. And they're working towards a model where GPT will just use all the tools that it needs to to accomplish whatever task you give it. So as we are adding all of these different functions and plugins and functionality, it's evolving and it's going to become really powerful very quickly and we'll be able to do all sorts of things. Like I can imagine a world maybe six months from now where you can just say, book me a trip, you know, a vacation to the Bahamas and chat GPT is going to be able to find the flights, the hotel, the car, figure out all the different places that you could go to, maybe reserve them if you allow it to. And eventually you'll just ask the computer for what you need and it'll do all of these tasks for you. It, it's just crazy. I mean, this stuff is just wild. The, the, the rate at which it's all advancing um, is nuts. 
So that whole GPT-4 Turbo model is going to be available in the UI uh, today. All of that stuff is going to now be available through their API as well, which means you can now send images and audio and get audio back and get images back. They're adding a ton of this multimodal functionality to the API. And I've been really looking forward to that because I think Dolly 3 is actually a really powerful uh, image generation model. And it's the only thing that sort of comes close to the level of quality that I've seen from Midjourney. I mean, there's Stable Diffusion XL, which is pretty good, but it takes so much configuration. And uh, Dolly 3 is able to get something really good out of the box pretty quickly. And so to have Dolly 3 available through the API, I think is gonna be a game changer for image generation because this model does a really good job of actually following instructions. And so if you say like, I want a red rhino sitting on top of a giraffe, sitting on top of an elephant in the middle of the ocean, it's gonna be able to actually generate an image that looks roughly like that. I, I'll have to give it a try and see what that prompt actually generates. Um, so so let's, let's see about that. In addition to those other API changes and enhancements, they're also doubling the rate limit and making it really convenient for users to request additional uh, rate limit increases. One other cool thing that I heard them mention during the dev day is that they're starting to handle this like file parsing and data retrieval aspect of things. So before you had to really weave together a lot of functionality and you know spin up a whole retrieval augmented generation sort of pipeline, have a vector database in the mix, retrieve the right chunks of your documents. Uh, and now they're starting to handle a lot of that more natively. So you're not gonna have to really worry about all of those details. You can actually like upload files to their API. They'll be able to extract the data as necessary and so on. So it's a, it's a huge quality of life improvement and it really makes it much simpler to create these different applications on top of the OpenAI APIs. Another really cool API feature that they mentioned during the dev day was the ability to actually generate voices. And they have a number of very realistic sounding voices. I think this is gonna be really powerful in conjunction with all of the other things that they have going on. So when OpenAI wants to respond to you, you, you have this new means of communicating with it. You know, you can do it over voice. And, and the voice feature is also available through the API, which I think is gonna really open up a whole new set of applications. Another thing that OpenAI mentioned is that they're rolling out this new thing called Copyright Shield. And it basically means that they're going to protect their users from copyright claims against them due to the use of the OpenAI tools. Copyright Shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. I think this is really helpful because AI has sort of been a gray area when it comes to copyright, and there have been some court cases that are starting up, and it looks like AI is sort of winning on that front so far because all of the generations show enough of a transformation of the original data that it can't be traced back to like specific images or specific artists. Uh, it's transformative enough, or this is what the courts seem to be deciding, that it can be used as an original work. OpenAI also announced the Whisper 3 API, so I guess we'll have much better voice to text sometime soon. I think this goes really well with the whole multimodal approach that they're going for, and I think it's great that they're enhancing all these different interfaces to make it even more effective. Next on our list is the brand new Assistance API. So this API really makes it much simpler for developers to create assistance and not have to deal with all of the details like managing a thread of conversation or chunking documents and doing all of this like retrieval under the hood. Uh, the assistance API really simplifies that and reduces the complexity. It, it's like an abstraction level higher on top of the completions API that they previously had. So you no longer have to worry about managing different conversations and storing those details in your own database and figuring out how to route it to different functions that you have, you can register all of these things 
with the assistant and it's like a stateful conversation. The assistant's API includes persistent threads so they don't have to figure out how to deal with long conversation history, built-in retrieval, code interpreter, a working Python interpreter in a sandbox environment, and of course, the improved function calling that we talked about earlier. So now this assistant is gonna be able to remember things from earlier in the conversation without you having to code all of those details together. Um, a lot of this stuff was handled by the open source community through Langchain and similar other libraries. And I think OpenAI is just sort of eating their lunch uh, by adding it to the core platform. I think this is the risk that comes with building on top of a platform like this and just being a simple wrapper. OpenAI is continuing to expand and handle some of this functionality just on their own out of the box. Ultimately, it's a really powerful new abstraction on top of ChatGPT that's gonna make it a lot easier for developers to build ChatGPT powered apps. All right, so let's talk about the biggest announcement that I think OpenAI made today. And that would be the ability to create custom GPTs. And so on the surface, this kind of seems very similar to Chad GPT, uh, but I think there's a lot more going on under the hood that makes this a big differentiator. So a custom GPT is like a really focused version of Chad GPT that addresses a specific use case. We're thrilled to introduce GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of Chad GPT for a specific purpose. You can build a GPT a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything, with instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. So you might think of something like uh, a GPT that helps you create stickers and get them printed, or a GPT that helps you do travel planning, a GPT that is like a coach for you. These custom GPTs will be able to incorporate instructions, capabilities, and knowledge to do all of their different functionality. So first of all, you'll give it instructions like how it should talk to its users and what sort of knowledge it should share and, and so on. Uh, but then you also select which capabilities it has access to. So it could go browse the internet or it could retrieve data from files, it could run some code and so on. And I think these capabilities are going to keep expanding and OpenAI is going to include more and more capabilities that you can use in these custom GPTs over time. Uh, and the third piece of it, which I think is really important, is that you can actually embed custom knowledge into these GPTs that it can then reference when having conversations with users. So instead of just relying on ChatGPT uh, and its current knowledge, you can actually use data that you upload to this custom GPT to answer users' questions. In a previous video, I talk about multiple use cases that would actually really benefit from this new technology. So in that video, the way I described it, you have to actually go and write some code and weave these things all together using other tools. But with this OpenAI announcement, that's all out the window. So you can just do it all directly in the ChatGPT platform now. You just gotta upload the documents and write the right instructions for your custom GPT, and then you can share it. So that's the other cool thing with the new functionality is that you can actually share these custom GPTs with other people, and they're making it so that you could either share it just with anybody, or you could share it like within your organization, and I think that's gonna make it really easy for people to adopt this new technology and really start getting a lot of value out of it. These custom GPTs will also benefit from all of the features that I discussed in the GPT-4 Turbo model. So you'll be able to actually talk with them, have them run code, browse the internet, call different APIs, call different functions. So I think this is a really powerful combination of features that's going to supercharge all of these chat GPT powered apps. Another really powerful feature that OpenAI announced in relation to the assistance API and the custom GPTs is the ability to actually track what the GPT is doing under the hood, like what is its thinking process and which tools is it going to use to converse with the user. 
I think this is going to be really useful because the GPT isn't going to be just a black box that you don't know the inner workings of. It's going to actually have a step-by-step -step recollection of what it did. So to top it all off, OpenAI also announced that they're planning to open a store for these custom GPTs, and they're actually planning to share some of their revenue with the creators of the most successful GPTs. And later this month, we're going to launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT there, and we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. We're going to pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. I think this is actually a massive opportunity similar to how the App Store launched back when the iPhone came out. Because now you're going to have all these different apps and it's kind of a fresh new slate to build on top of to use all of these different capabilities. So if you're looking at the past and thinking, wow, I wish I had built an app back in like 2009. Well, now is your chance because now there's a new app store that's going to exist and it's going to have all these super powered apps and the platform owner is going to actually pay people to build the apps. So it's uh, really a whole new world. It's super wild. I'm really excited to play around with all these different features and I'll be making videos explaining how to actually build custom GPTs and how to use the voice through the API and so on. So make sure you stay tuned and make sure you subscribe so that you see those videos as soon as they come out. So yeah, it was a crazy day for AI. It's gonna be a crazy ending to this year and I'm super excited for it. Thank you for watching. If you found this video insightful, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.